uh, she is about you have spoken at length uh, at various on various occasions about the um, indian foundations of uh, modern science um, and uh, the world i think has really acknowledged the fact that indian rishis because you mentioned canada just now um, had had made great tremendous progress and it contributed vastly to the field of astronomy mathematics and so on uh, but this is rarely spoken of or even heard of or people are hardly aware of this so uh, could you speak a little bit about about the indian foundations of western science or western science as we know it but um, what have been our contributions that well, people don't yes. know yes well we can go back far and talk about astronomy <clears throat> and mathematics people do uh, recognize in fact uh, normally in books you'll see that um, the zero was uh, done in india um, about 1800 or 2000 years ago and but then uh, more recent histories also say that probably even the mayans had a zero or the mm -hmm. babylonians had a zero they didn't have the numerical system the way we have it um, so people do accept it and then some uh, popular books say that the greeks were more into uh, geometry and indians were more into algebra and algebra was taken by the persians and the arabs by uh, umar khayyam for example, mm. and others. And then uh, from there, it went to Europe. Now, it's less known that um, Fibonacci was a famous Italian writer right. about 800 years ago. Now, what he did, and this is how he introduced Indian math to Europe. He, he took an Indian book in Arabic and translated that into Latin. Mm. And, uh, and, and uh, a lot of what is credited to Fibonacci was really Indian mathematics. And he also introduced the Indian numerical system and the church fought it for a couple of hundred years. And they fought it because the Indian numerical system going back to Brahmagupta and even prior to that also had negative numbers, right? Mm -hmm. You Because the moment you can you write plus two, you can also write minus two, you know, mm -hmm. plus two, minus two is equal to zero and so on, because you had zero while the Europeans didn't have zero. So they fought for it. The church, church fought it. They said, this is devilish. The ne negative numbers are devilish, it's this and that. So you can see what it points to is uh, resistance that cultures have to things which in retrospect appear perfectly reasonable. So, so that's what happened. But the story of uh, influence or foundations of um, um, uh, modern science, Indian foundation of modern science, which are not generally known. Um, in my essay, I pointed out to just a few things. Uh, for example, um, uh, the mathematical logic, which is at the basis of computer science or machines, it's based, uh, based, based on mathematical logic. And this um, mathematical logic was created by three people in England uh, around 1850s. And their names are um, George Boole, Augustus de Morgan, and Babbage. Charles Babbage. Babbage. And in fact, Babbage is even called the father of the computer because he tried to create a mechanical computer. You know, he had program and so on. Now, uh, these three belong to a salon, intellectual salon, which was headed by a fellow called George Everest. Mm -hmm. And George Everest, as we know, was the Surveyor General of India for 20, 30 years. And in fact, his tomb is still in Missouri. Mm -hmm. So he used to go to England during the summers and he would call all these people and talk to them about what he had learned. Now, okay, so these, these people are famous now, but in 1898, George Boole's widow, um, wrote a Mary, she wrote a famous essay where she said, look, uh, you know, people should know that George Everest was had was was talking about Navi Nyaya, where mm -hmm. all this mathematical logic had already been done in India about a thousand years prior. Mm -hmm. And Navi Nyaya, modern scholars show, is perfectly equivalent to all of mathematical logic. Mm -hmm. So what he was trying to tell these people. And these people acknowledged because I think uh, Augustus de Morgan um, also tried to help 
um, some other unknown uh, Indian mathematician named Ramachandra publishes stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these guys knew that many of these ideas came from India. So this is one side. Mm -hmm. The other side is what really sets our modern age uh, apart from um, older times is uh, quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. And from quantum mechanics has, everything else has changed, you know, chemistry and biology and cosmology. You also have quantum cosmology and so on. Now the creator of quantum mechanics, Erwin Schrodinger, he was a Vedantin. He was an Austrian, he was right. a Vedantin. And in his own autobiography, he says that, look, um, the central idea of quantum mechanics came to me, he says, from the Upanishadic Mahavakya, I am Atma Brahma. That this Atman is the entire cosmos. Absolutely. So the central idea of quantum mechanics is that this quantum state, a quantum state means a description of a physical system at its most elementary level, is a superposition of all possibilities. You know, mm -hmm. it's like normally you're wearing shoes. Your shoes can be brown or black or they're colorful, they can be blue or red or whatever else, but they can't be brown and black and blue and red at the same time. Correct. But in quantum mechanics, that's what you have. You mm -hmm. have a system which is all these mutually exclusive things at the same time, same time. all the possibilities, mm -hmm. right? Which is what this idea of how can the Atman, which is the smallest and the small, right? Can be equal to the entire Brahman. And mm -hmm. you have all these paradoxical statements in the Upanishads or in the Vedas, right? Um, um, or in, uh, you look at Ishavasi Upanishad, it's the smaller, smaller than the smallest, bigger than the biggest. biggest. Uh, this Atman is, right? That Isha is. So this particular uh, intuition is the heart. The second part of quantum mechanics, now I'm teaching you quantum mechanics after this, you can tell others that you know quantum mechanics. As no, well. quantum mechanics, I'm an expert. <laughs> <laughs> the second part of quantum mechanics is you have all these superpositions in reality at the same time. But when the mind interacts with this reality, then mind has access to only one of these. One of these, right. Only one of these. So and in quantum mechanics, that's called the collapse of the wave function. Mm -hmm. Now, in... Um, in Vedanta, uh, the mind is like the observer. The mind is the observer because the mind has ego, ahankar, and Sakshi. Sakshi, right. Yeah, Sakshi. Well, there are two. Uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the Veda, it's uh, spoken about Dva Suparana. There are two birds on the same branch. Right. One, one of them, is eating. One of them is only watching the Sakshi. Eating. The other is enjoying, right? Right. So you have the mind and the Atman. So the Atman is also like the light, right? So the, what falls in the mind becomes, uh, becomes physically distinct. Mm -hmm. In Atman, you have everything. Mm -hmm. It has its infinity. But what the light as it falls on the mind becomes embodied. And therefore only one of the, uh, or, or a countable, number of possibilities of the become one, become one infinity. So from many, it becomes one within mm -hmm. us. And, and that is the very heart of quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. And this is what opens up everything. And that is the foundation mm -hmm. that you have in the Vedas, you know, or you have in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna's saying, since your name is Krishna as well, <laughs> <laughs> Krishna's saying that I'm within everybody. Yes. Right, or you can use either Krishna's image um, or Shiva. They're the same. Hari Hara, right? One, or depending upon how you, what your oh. temperament, temperament in relation to how you want to relate to the mystery. You yes. can either relate through through the power of uh, of yama and niyamas, of rectitude, of mm -hmm. morality. That is Krishna or you can do it through freedom, mm -hmm. um, uh, pure freedom, that is Shiva. And freedom has two aspects. It has the fierce aspect, which is Rudra, Rudra or Agora, or it has the pleasant aspect, 
which is Vamadeva or Parvati. You know, it has both aspects. Freedom has both aspects. It has heat. You know, before it becomes light, it has, you know, when you burn something, firstly, it's hot. You can, fingers can, can get burned. That is the Raudra part. But then the light emerges, which is the, the beautiful part, beautiful which part. is what uh, liberates us. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.